on it. Wow, wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is really cool. The fastest, like, pitted against this year's champion secretary, Amazing. comes out on top. Yeah, I didn't that's, know that. That's, that's awesome. So cool. That's so cool. Let's introduce today's team since they've already started talking. <laughs> we got Will Kane joining awesome. us this what morning. Margaret Hoover is the author of American Individualism. She's with us as well. Richard Sakharides is a former senior advisor to President Clinton, writer at the New Yorker.com. And uh, you're joining us as well. Nice to have you Thanks joining the panel. Our morning. pleasure, our pleasure. Okay, our, our get real this morning. It's just odd. And this trial has been so crazy, the Sandusky trial. So yesterday, uh, Joe Amendola, who's um, Jerry Sandusky's lawyer, was joking around with reporters and his banter raising a lot of eyebrows because it, it got very strange very fast. So a little context here. A Sandusky, as you know, faces 51 counts of sexual abuse against 10 young boys. When asked whether or not Sandusky would in fact take the stand in his own defense, Amendola called the drama a soap opera. But not just any soap opera. Here's how it went. Stay tuned. Come on, it's like a soap. You have to wait and see. If Thank you, you. If you know the answers, it takes all the excitement out of it. This days of our lives? Which one was going to be the to? I, I think it's General Hospital. General Hospital. Actually, it could be all, all my children. Yeah, yeah, it was that last one there. It kind of went back and forth. They're sort of joking and bantering, and he says, all my children. Um, Not so great. You know, I kind of feel for this guy, too, uh, because Amendola? he... And Dole, a little bit. You know, I mean, this is a very tough situation, right? The stakes are very high. He's a good lawyer, obviously. But the pressure, you know, under such pressure outside that courtroom, I, I've been in similar situations as a trial lawyer, and, you know, you're, you weigh everything you say inside the courtroom. You're outside, someone's shouting questions at you. I mean, obviously, he did not not mean to say that and he I'm sure he regrets it. Uh, regrets very, it. I mean regrets David it this Letterman morning. or Jay Leno wouldn't even write a joke in yeah, such poor I, taste. I don't think he was being intentional. I think it was something he said, you know, just it, inadvertently, inadvertently that yeah, well, it's uh you know, very the court of, the, the, in the court of public <laughs> opinion, this is not going to help their no. case at all. No, it's really yeah, I completely agree. Ugh. And it's interesting, though, what you say about that pressure. You know, you finally get outside, Ugh. you're throwing stuff in the back of your car, right. you finally don't have to be, you know, in the courtroom and... I don't know. That, still that, watch. It, as uh, it's coming out of your mouth, I think a switch would have been flipped. And you're like, that, that, that's not what I want to be saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is still unclear, by the way, in this case, if uh, Sandusky is going to testify at all in his defense. Um, we're going to take you uh, live this morning ahead on Starting Point to, uh, to France on that hostage situation we've been telling you about all morning. Four people are being held uh, by a man who's claiming to be an al-Qaeda operative. We'll update you on what's happening there. Plus, a uh, legal battle with uh, political overtones, of course. About to reach crescendo on Capitol Hill, Congress could find Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt. We're going to talk to a man who's been inside those meetings. Representative Elijah Cummings will join us live. That's all ahead this morning. We're back after this break. breaks or we're having good arguments discussion. <laughs> I'm worn out. That's uh, Nirvana, all apologies. Uh, despite a report to the contrary, Mitt That's Romney like is Mitt insisting. Book, right? But it's no apologies, right? That's right. Yeah, You're the right. book is no apology. I and as we say, not, not right. it's a loose connection, Mark. Go apology. with it here. <laughs> Give the man a break. Okay, no <laughs> apology. Uh, Mitt Romney saying that the Florida Senator Marco Rubio is in fact being vetted as a possible running mate come November. There was lots of contradictory information coming out yesterday after ABC News reported that Rubio was not being vetted. Uh, Rubio looked kind of uncomfortable when he was discussing it last night uh, after Romney uh, moved pretty quickly to shoot the story down. Take a look. The story was entirely false. Marco Rubio is being thoroughly vetted as part of our process. It's been an interesting day, yeah. Uh, you know, look, I don't want to talk about the process. I haven't up to this point. It's Governor Romney's process, and um, uh, I want to be respectful of that. I think all of us should be, all of us involved in politics should be respectful of his process. Rubio, it's been an interesting day, we hasn't all it? At that. You know why we laughed at Because that was an authentic moment for Marco Rubio. Say, he was authentically and laughing for, right there. And for Governor Romney. And you know, with all the focus on the Latino vote, they certainly That's did not want that news out. That's what they weren't thinking about this guy. And Florida, it's not even just the Latino vote. If Florida? they weren't thinking of that guy yesterday, they are thinking about him today. Yeah. Well, people were saying it would be a huge mistake. Two things: one, mistake not to have him on a short list, but number two, what a to have that um, information leaked would be a 
slap in the face right. in some ways. I think some are calling it because, of course, the Latino vote is so critical. And, and Governor Romney's shop so far has not been one that has had a propensity for leaks. They've been very tight-lipped. They're very loyal. And frankly, it's it's one advisor, basically, who's vetting this entire process and thrusting this. It would be silly not to have And Marco he said Rubio it's not her leaking. Except yeah, would, clearly it's not Beth Meyers leaking. Except I would add this. Uh, Mitt Romney was vetted by John McCain back in, what, 2008. And Mitt Romney said he doesn't want to vet anyone he's not seriously considering to be a vice presidential candidate. And he said his number one issue on your vice presidential um, resume is are you ready to be president? And there's sources in some of these articles suggest inside of uh, Mitt Romney's camp that Marco Rubio is young. He's young. He's, he's green. experienced. Yeah. Yes, no one's arguing that. The point is the Do leaking you... of his name is bad for the campaign. One, because it's a campaign that doesn't leak. And number two, because you don't want to have a high profile Latino not even on the list. Put him on the list. Right. Otherwise, there's some backlash for and that. He'd be good for them. I mean, he'd be so good for them. As a VP. Uh, as a VP. I mean, you yeah. say that now. <laughs> you know, no, I just think he's, such an, he's, 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 he's such an appealing what? figure. What? 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 I don't believe it. All right, we got to take a short break. We come back in. Oh, I like him. You do? All right. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, Apparently relatively, on the list. I don't like any of them. He's but. on the list. He's on the list. <laughs> uh, up next, a new memoir is raising some questions about President Obama's own version of his own life. The author of this uh, new Obama biography is David Marinus, and, and there he is. He's here live to talk with us about his new book. His playlist, Bob Marley. Look at that. Three little birds. You're watching the starting point. We're back in a moment. Hi, David. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Right. A new biography about President Obama sheds a unique light on the president's past. It's generating lots of buzz because it questions President Obama's history and his memoir, which is called Dreams from My Father. The author of the new book is David Marinus, and he traces several generations of the president's lineage from Kenya to Kansas and gives an unprecedented look at young Barack Obama's life before his career in politics ever began. Here's a passage. Barack Obama was 27 when he reached Harvard Law School, an unpredictable jumble of happenstance skill Capricious timing, uncommon will, and sheer luck would carry him forward from there, but the basic design had been set for his future. He knew at last who he was and had a sense of what he wanted to be. That really is where the book starts leaving <laughs> off because we don't uh, necessarily go into President Obama at Harvard in this particular book. David Marinus, the author, joins us now. It's so nice to see you. Thank you so much. Um, was, it, was it interesting and fun to research? And, and, and do people want to talk to you? You talked to like 350 people. <laughs> the least fun for me is trying to talk to politicians or people in the White House. I did not have to do that for this book. This book is about the world that created Barack Obama and how he refashioned himself out of the jumble of his life. And so it, it really sets him up to the point where you see how he found himself and how he figured out his background and was ready for his political life. And that's the part that interested me. So uh, it was great fun to travel around the world to trace his roots and to, to figure him, him out. He's, he wrote a memoir. Of well, he did. And, you know, I'm glad that you, you sort of mentioned in the beginning the buzz about the book challenging his memoir. That's not the point of my book. Um, I'm not writing it as a fact checker. Um, I'm writing it as an historian. So, you, you know, other people for ideological reasons are pouncing on that part of, of what my book is. But, in fact, I'm just trying to tell the truth. I mean, a memoir is far different from rigorous factual biography. So it's not as though I'm trying to say, aha, I got you at each point. It's just I'm trying to present the way I really found it, which is, in many cases, different from what he presented. He was writing a memoir that was shaped through the lens of race almost entirely. And so that led to certain distortions, um, composite characters, which he acknowledges, and compression of things, which I think were more... more uh, had to do with substance than with just trying to tell the story, and that's why I pointed out. I mean, I think it's so interesting that you say that, you know, you don't fault him for the distortions, but I think that, you know, in this political context, some of this is going to come up in the campaign, right? Well, I mean, absolutely. You know, right? And, it, you know, it's been fascinating for me. The right wing sort of is at once dismissing the book as hagiography and then cherry-picking every single negative thing in it to use against Obama. It's almost why I didn't want to write this book. Well, as a, as a member of the right wing, let me, let me just challenge <laughs> one of those assertions, and that is that any kind of criticism or questioning... Right well, wing. I'm holding down the right side of the oh. table. Oh. So, <laughs> literally... <laughs> Literally the right wing. <laughs> no, but th th that could be an ideological questioning or criticism because I think it raises some serious questions about what the role of a memoir is. Is it truth telling or is it, as you said, some kind of ability to massage and to composite characters? I do think through your rigorous research, it questions what the purpose of a memoir is and if it's fiction or nonfiction. Well, he wrote it when he was in his 30s before he was running for president. He had no clue that people like me would be coming along later and. and 
and trying to tell the real story. Um, but you're absolutely right. It is a legitimate question about where, where the line is in memoir. My major point is, yes, there are discrepancies between what really happened and the way he presented it. I don't think they're venal. I think he did it for reasons of trying to tell a story about his search for, for to find himself. I don't think he was trying to create this mythological character. Many of the of the uh, mythologies in the book were just passed along to him by his own family. Right, that, that's fair. Yeah. That, that, right. But can you, in terms of the disparities that continue, can you characterize them? I mean, he's telling this narrative arc. There's a, there's a trend in the disparities as he as he uses sort of his literary flourishes to to tell a certain story. So can you can you sort of amplify or augment the theme behind his the disparities? He, he the seems to make up stuff about race a lot, right? I well, think the characters that are composite. And, yes, uh, Regina mean, is, is a black character, but it, actually in real life, she's a white woman. Michelle. That's interesting to me. Well, I mean, part of it is is taken from one of his white classmates at Occidental. But mostly, Regina represents Michelle, who, who was in his life when he wrote the memoir, but not when, when, during the period that he's writing about in the memoir. And so that's the type of composite he's See, using. See, I think what's so interesting about your book is not so much what was different than what was in his book, but that what your book shows us and tells us about who he is today. Well, that's, that's what I hope the book is about. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to whine about the way people are interpreting, because I understand that. But I'm just, you know, I want to I mean, get... What are the major insights? What are your major insights? Well, I think that the central fact about Obama is that his life is, is essentially um, an effort to avoid traps. Mm -hmm. You know, he had the trap of being born on an island further than any landmass in the world. He had the trap of being biracial, trying to figure himself out. Uh, the trap of, of a dysfunctional family. And when people look at him today, you know, he's often seen as too cautious. Cautious, very cautious. Um, and I think there's a reason for that. And I think that when you understand his life from reading this book, you'll see how he acts the One last he question, does. David. Your book concentrates not so much on Barack Obama, but the people that came before him, his father, his grandfather, his grandparents. How much do you think who your grandparents were informs who you are? Well, you know, in, in a political year, that question is, is, is totally valid and raised. But I think if you examine any, uh, any human being, you'll see that the forces that shape them come early. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not trying to say that, that this is a, a book that should decide how you vote for president or what right. his issues are. But if you want to understand him and why he does what he does, I think that's vital. David Barron, it's nice to have you. The book, again, is called The Story by David <laughs> Meredith. And it's really only the first part of The Story. There's that's much right. more to come. The book ends with him going off to Harvard. Lots more to see. Maybe in another few years we'll get yes. the next part two. update. <laughs> Maybe a part two. Thanks, David. Nice okay, to have thank you. you. we got to take a short break. We're going to continue to update you on breaking news uh, this morning, obviously, out of Toulouse, France, where we know that a gunman is holding four people hostage. Uh, he's claiming to be a member of Al-Qaeda. We'll update you on what's happening there. Also, Julian Assange, we know that he, uh, the founder of WikiLeaks, uh, is facing arrest. He's in London, but he's uh, holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy. We'll update you on what's happening on that story as well. Got to take a short break. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to Starting Point. We know a great deal about President Obama's history. We were just talking about it a few minutes ago. But First Lady Michelle Obama's family tree has largely been a mystery. Back in 2008, then-candidate Obama spoke about it in a speech about race. I'm the son of a black man from Kenya and a white woman from Kansas. I am married to a black American who carries within her the blood of slaves and slave owners. An inheritance we pass on to our two precious daughters. The First Lady's ancestry was little more defined than that, a descendant of slave and slaves and slave owners. Until now, there's a new book. It's called American Tapestry, the story of the black, white, and multiracial ancestors of Michelle Obama. And it explores the First Lady's roots dating back to the 19th century. Rachel Swarns is the author. She's also a reporter for the New York Times. It's nice to have you. Thank how you. complicated and how challenging was it to research this book? It's hard work. Digging back into history, and I really try to trace her grandparents, basically, back as far as I can, is challenging because for folks who were enslaved, there simply isn't much in the historical record. Uh, people were barred from being able to read and write. There aren't letters and journals and diaries. Um, and the census record didn't name people until 1870. So often, unless the slaveholder himself kept good documents and good notes, you wouldn't necessarily know anything about the slaves. All this centers around a slave na named Melvinia, who was the great, great, great grandmother of Michelle Obama, right? That's right. And we were very lucky with Melvinia because she actually appeared in her owner's will. 
and that's why we were able to trace her from the 1850s to when she appeared finally in the census in 1870. It was her son who she had with, you believe, the, the white slave holder that actually sort of really, I think, gave a lot of interesting branches to Michelle Obama's family tree. Tell me about that. Basically, what we were able to do is Michelle Obama always suspected that she had white ancestry in her family tree and through DNA testing and research we were able to fill in those blanks and the most likely candidate is the son of her slave owner. So you had a chance to go and interview some of the white relatives uh, from the family tree and what was it like when you came to them and said you know one you, you might be related to Michelle Obama, uh, and, and two, you might have black relatives in your family too. Was it, were they shocked? Were they thrilled? It's, it's a hard thing for people because on the one hand, being related to the first that lady. That understatement of the year. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> on the other hand, these ties date back to a painful time in our history. So you're telling someone, you may be related to the first lady, but your family also owned her family. Yeah, that's, so that's hard you, stuff. You know, I also read where some people didn't want to be publicly identified when, they, when their ancestors, when it became known that their ancestors might have been slave owners. This was true. I, I interviewed many relatives and some of them just didn't feel comfortable. They were afraid that people might view them as racist or that they might be forced to atone for their forebears. Did the first lady help at all with I was going to ask her to read the book as she yeah. weighed in on, on what she thinks about her own history. You know, they the could have competing books, his and her <laughs> you know, biographies. <laughs> you know, the first lady has a policy of not doing interviews with books, but I did interview members of her extended family and briefed her staff. Um, she had a book and her staff did ahead of time. So she's had a chance to read it. I don't know what she thinks. Yeah, it's fascinating. You found out more about her life than she possibly did. I, I bet, I yeah. bet, I bet. It's Thanks so, so much. It's so Thank nice you. to see you. Rachel Sorens. The book is called American Tapestry. Got to take a short break. End points up next. Point. Who wants to start? Well, McCain? Secretariat. Yes, I want to talk about Secretariat some more. Christine Roman's story earlier that Secretariat's times um, in its races from back in the 70s still stand as the fastest times today, which fascinates me for this reason. Swimmers, track stars, they get faster every year. And in a sport where we talk about milkshakes and steroids with horses, that's time stands from the 70s. I don't know that everybody, that, that performance is getting better because of performance enhancing uh, artificial no, drugs. Right. I do think our, our athletic training has gotten better. It's gotten Absolutely. more sophisticated. Our nutrition has gotten better. So that actually factors. But you all would those think factors that would be the same for horses, right? The breeding would get better right. and more efficient. The nutrition would get better and more efficient. You notice how it's been like Ancestry Day today on the I show, know. right? We talked about theme. the Obamas and now we're talking about the breeding of horses. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's all about where you're from today. And That's if you own right. a little piece of secretary because of that news, you'd be a wealthy person. You'd That's be rich. Right. And, yeah. and it's incredible, too. I just We were talking about the ancestry that has happened because the Obamas have ascended to the White House. You know, Michelle Obama didn't even know her own history until she got to the White House, and now this thorough genealogy has been done on her family that is now, a, it's a contribution to her we family, talking, but American We were history. talking on the break how interesting is that Americans care so little, carry so little yeah. curiosity on their own ancestry. I don't think that's true. Go to Ancestry.com. Comparatively. Com. Comparatively. Yeah. Yeah. Comparatively. There's a curiosity, but it's not a deeply grounded identification that, that defines, defines the course right. of your life. Right. I think the Marinus book is going to be big factor big in the, big in the already. election. I think it's going to factor so? big in the oh, election, yes. And I think really? it's going to be a that's very nasty election on both sides. I think there's going to be a lot of mud thrown. And I'll bet you that the Republicans